Hello, Dr. Ron Eaglin, and I'm going to take you through uh, the implementation of a stack using a doubly linked list. First things first, let's look at actually how you would use the stack. Stack handles two methods, push and pop. Things go onto the top of the stack, things come off, off the stack. So here, I create a stack, I push five elements, I print it out. I pop two elements, and then I print it out again. So you can see that the stack has, follows the implementation of what you'd expect for a stack. But let's look at how the code is done. So how I do the code here is I've actually got two objects here, a node and a stack. And the way I know that this is a doubly linked list is because the node has a next and a last pointer. It has another pointer in it for the content, which is what you're going to store inside of the uh, nodes of the stack. So uh, when I actually, and that's just, that's just a node. Now, the implementation of the stack itself contains pointers to two objects, the head, okay, which would be the, 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 basically in this case, it's the bottom of the stack, and top, which would be the top of the stack. The head is essentially a linked list artifact because we call the head of a linked list the head. So we got to implement two functions, push and pop are the two functions we need to implement. So what do we do if we have a push? Well, in the push function, we pass it some content because when you need to push content onto the stack, we first check to see if the head is null. And if it's null, you simply create the head, you create a new node and make that the head, and then you set the top equal to the head because they're the same thing. If it's not, okay, if the head actually is, does exist, then what we'll do here is we'll create a new node, what we're going to call added node. Now we're going to have to move around some pointers here. So once you create the added node, the added node has to have the back pointer set to the current top of the node because it's going to go on top of it. So the backwards pointer is going to point to the existing top. The existing top has to have its next pointer set to the added node, which is what we do in the second step. So now the two pointers are pointing at each other. And then the last thing that we do is we set the top to be equal to the new node that you just created. And that's it. We're done really that easy if you follow the logic. Popping is relatively easy too. Well the first thing you do is you check to see if the, if the stack is actually empty. This.head equals null and if it is you just return a null. Okay? Now what we're going to need to do now since we're popping is we need to keep track of the current top node. So we're going to set a variable equal to this.top. So the top now is stored in A. We need to change the two pointers just like we did in the last example. So this dot top, the current top pointer, needs to become the last node. In other words, the, the top is now the one that was underneath the top. And the next pointer of that node now needs to be equal to null. Okay, that's it. It's that simple. Okay, you're just moving pointers. That's all you're doing. Now the reason I did store this dot top the current, the top before you added the, um, pop, pop the other one off, is because I like to return the, the um, object, the, the node that you actually popped off the top. So A, which was set to this dot top before you started, is now going to be returned. So the pop function will return the node that was popped. Push function doesn't need to return anything, but it can, it can return the node that you pushed onto it, which would be convention. And then all I did after that was I have a toString function that essentially goes through each of the nodes, setting node dot, the current node to the next node each time it puts something to a string, and then it returns the string of all the content. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Good programming. Hope you can follow this.